Rules of indices. We're going to firstly recap a few rules of indices from GCSE. Grab your notepad and write out 5 cubed, 5 times 5 times 5, times 5 to the power 6, which is 6 5s multiplied together. Count the number of 5s that you've got. You should see that there are 9. There are 3 from the 5 cubed, 6 from the 5 to the power 6, and so when you write that in shorthand, it should equal 5 to the power 9. This gives us our first rule from GCSE, that is, when you have two numbers with the same base, here 5, and you multiply them, you simply add the indices. If when you multiply you add the indices, then when you divide, it logic seems to suggest that you should subtract the indices. In your notepad, write out 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that's 3 to the power 6, and divide it by 3 times 3, that's 3 squared. You should see that the two 3's at the bottom cancel with two of the 3's at the top. You're subtracting two of the 3's from the top, in effect. You're left with 4 at the top, so 3 to the power 6 divided by 3 squared should equal 3 to the power 4. Our second rule, when you divide two numbers with the same base, you subtract the indices. A couple of special cases here. By our rule, 3 cubed divided by 3 squared should equal 3 to the power 1. But what does that mean? Well, again, write out 3 cubed, divide it by 3 squared, so 3 times 3 times 3, divided by 3 times 3, you should see you've just left with 3 on the top. So 3 to the power 1 is just the same as 3. There's nothing special in this case about the number 3. Anything to the power 1, power 1 doesn't really do anything. 18 to the power 1 is 18. 76 to the power 1 is 76. Here we've taken a number and divided it by itself. Now I know that when you take a number and divide it by itself, 7 divided by 7, that's 1. 52 divided by 52, that's 1. 2 to the power 9 divided by 2 to the power 9 must be 1. But using our rule of indices, 2 to the power 9 divided by 2 to the power 9, subtract the indices, 9 take away 9 is 0. So 2 to the power 9 divided by 2 to the power 9 should be 2 to the power 0. But we just realised that it's also 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. This leads to a rule. There's nothing special in this case about 2s and 9s. Anything to the power 0 is 1. Notice that we have a problem here if we tried to do 0 to the power 0. Is 0 to the power 0 1? Or is 0 to the power 0 0? Well, it's undefined. We mustn't ever use 0 to the power 0. It doesn't mean anything. What about negative indices? Write out 2 cubed. Divide it by 2 to the power 5 and cancel all you can. You should find that you've got two twos left on the bottom. So 2 cubed divided by 2 to the power 5 looks, from what we've done, to be 1 over... 2 times 2, which is 2 squared. But we know from our rule of indices that when we divide numbers with the same base, we subtract the indices. So that should be the same as 2 to the power minus 2. A common mistake is to think that 2 to the power minus 2 is somehow negative. It isn't. The, mi the negative index simply means 1 over, or the reciprocal. So 2 to the power minus 2 is 1 over 2 squared. 2 to the power minus 8 would be 1 over 2 to the power 8. Negative indices means 1 over. What then does fractions mean as indices? Well, let's write out what let's write out 4 to the power of half times 4 to the power of half is. 4 to the power of half times 4 to the power of half, we've just seen a rule. When you, add, when you multiply together two numbers with the same base, you add the indices, and a half plus a half is 1. So 4 to the power of half times 4 to the power of half should be 4 to the power of 1. We've just seen that 4 to the power of 1 is 4. Power 1 doesn't do anything. So we've got a number here which, when you multiply it by itself, you get 4. That number must be the square root of 4. 
So 4 to the power of half must be the square root of 4, which we know is 2, but I'll just leave it as the square root of 4 here for the time being. This tells us that a power of a half is the square root. x to the power of half, then, is the square root of x. What about x to the power of third? Well, x to the power of third must be the number which, when you multiply it by itself and then again by itself, you get x. Let's write that out with a number example here. 8 to the power of third times 8 to the power of third times 8 to the power of third. When you multiply numbers with the same base here, 8, you add the indices. A third, add a third, add a third is 1. So that should equal 8 to the power 1, which we know is 8. What number, when you multiply by itself and then by itself again, do you get 8? It's called the cube root of 8. So here, 8 to the power of 3rd must be the cube root of 8, which we know is 2. But I'll just write it here as the cube root. x to the power of 3rd is the cube root of x. This gives us a general rule. When you've got a fraction indices, a fractional index like here, the denominator of the fraction, 2 in this case, 3 in this one, means root. So this is the square root of x, this is the cube root of x. Exam questions like to combine all three of the rules that we've seen. Firstly, write down the value of 16 to the power of half. It's only worth one mark, so it should be easy. 16 to the power of half we've just seen means the square root of 16. It is easy. The answer is 4. Pot B is worth 2 marks, so it's a bit trickier. 16 to the power minus, two, minus 3 over 2 has 3 steps to it. The first one we've already done. The first one is to deal with that. 16 to the power, to the power of half, or the square root of 16, is 4. So we now know that we're looking for 4 to the power minus 3. We've done the over 2 bit. Next I like to get rid of the minus bit here, that just tells us it's 1 over, so we now know it's 1 over 4 cubed. And 4 cubed is 64, it's 4 times 4 times 4, so 1 over 64. A common mistake is to think that the minus sign here somehow makes the number negative, it doesn't, it simply makes it 1 over. Here's another exam question. Have a go at it yourself, press pause and come back when you're ready. The question says write down the value of 8 to the power of 1 third. Now we know the power of 1 third means cube root, so the cube root of 8 is 2. You'll never get awkward numbers by the way, you'll never be expected to write down the cube root of 7 for instance. Part B says find the value of 8 to the power minus 2 thirds, so I'll write it all out, 8 to the power minus 2 thirds. We've already done the first bit of this, which is the cube root. Cube root of 8 is 2, so that must be the same as 2. We've still got the power minus 2. 2 to the power minus 2. The next thing I like to do is get rid of the minus bit, which means 1 over, not minus, not negative, so 1 over 2 squared. And 2 squared is 4, so we get 1 over 4 as our answer.